Microsoft Teams meetings actually give us a lot more sharing capabilities than we had in WebEx meetings. Let's take a look at um, some of the enhancements that we have with Microsoft Teams meetings. I'm in a meeting right here. I'm the only one here, but we'll just pretend that there are some others attending this meeting. And I want to share some content. So let's take a look at what options I have, what type of content I can share from a Teams meeting. So to share content, down here at the bottom, this uh, control bar, the share tray is the middle icon. When I click that, a little tray is going to slide up from the bottom. And I have four main categories of content that I can share. First, I can share an entire screen. I can share just my desktop if I want to. An enhancement over WebEx for us Mac users is that I can choose which screen I share. With Teams, I can share my external monitor whether I'm on a Mac or on a PC. So if I wanna share my desktop, I simply click on that. I see a little red bar that goes around the entire screen. And I can see the uh, controls in the bottom corner, kind of a lot like WebEx. If I wanna get rid of those, I can just minimize that window and I can minimize the Teams window. And now there's nothing showing Teams on my screen here. Um, if I want to give control to someone else, I can certainly do that within a Microsoft Teams meeting. You just go up to the top of the screen and you can give control by dropping down this little drop down, and you'll see other names listed there if there's other people in that meeting. You can also pin this to make that show all the time. And then if you want to stop presenting, and this is not on your screen, you can simply go up to the top and you can stop presenting. Or if I bring up the control panel down here in the corner, this control panel, I can stop sharing using this little um, picture of a monitor with an X on it. So if I click that, now I'm not sharing any content. We're back to an audio only um, call. Now let's check out the other sharing options real quick. If I bring up share again, I can share just a window. So let's bring up a couple more windows here. And you can see that I have a Safari browser window. I have my inbox for um, Outlook. And then I have this particular Teams meeting that I'm in. An enhancement over WebEx for sharing windows is that whenever I'm sharing just a window and I move something on top of that window, it doesn't obscure that window. In WebEx, you might remember that it would put like a gray box over part of the window. If you brought up OneNote real quick and we're gonna type up some notes, it would obscure part of that screen. With Teams, it doesn't obscure the screen if you put something over the top of it. So if I wanna just share um, my Teams window itself, I can certainly do that. And you see the red box just around the Teams window right there because I'm only sharing one window. Again, I can stop sharing by just clicking the little box right here with the X on it. So I'm no longer sharing and we bring up the share tray again. Let's talk about sharing a PowerPoint slide deck from a Microsoft Teams meeting. Because this is Office 365, it's connected to your Office account, you will see all of your most recent PowerPoint slide decks when you choose to share content. Um, this is ordered by the most recent uh, files that you opened to the least recent. You can also click browse and navigate around to find a PowerPoint slide deck. But chances are, if you're presenting a slide deck, it's the most recent one that you've opened or one of the most recent ones that you've opened. So if I just bring up the, this one right here, you'll see that this is stored in Austin Hable's OneDrive. So this is files that are shared with me, files that I've accessed from SharePoint or from my OneDrive. I can choose any of these PowerPoint slide decks, but I'll just open up this one and you can see that it's going to download the uh, PowerPoint slide deck in an ad hoc way and display just the PowerPoint itself. Now, this is already beyond what WebEx can do, but something that's special about Microsoft Teams meetings is you have the ability to let people go forward or backward within your um, PowerPoint slide decks. So I'm sharing this PowerPoint slide deck. If someone else was on this call, they would see these little arrow controls in the bottom, right, bottom left corner of their screen and they would be able to click the arrows and go forward and back regardless of where I am in the slide deck. So if they go back a couple slides and I'm on like slide four, it will give them a little button to go to the live view. So they can click on that to catch up where I'm at on the slide deck. 
Now, if I'm a presenter and I'm pre presenting something, you know, sensitive, some kind of an announcement that I don't want to tip people off early and it's on slide 35, I can simply click the little um, eyeball right here. And if I click on that, that prevents people from being able to go forward and back. It's called private viewing is disabled. So you see that banner up here that says participants can't move through the shared presentation on their own. So they'll lose the ability to, um, to use the controls. If I want to allow that, again, I can click on the little eyeball to take away that little slash and you'll see that private viewing is re-enabled again. Again, like anything else, I see stop presenting right here and I can stop presenting that particular slide deck. The fourth and final option that I want to show with um, sharing is a Microsoft whiteboard. So if you are having a virtual meeting, not everybody can participate in a whiteboarding session, you can do that with Microsoft whiteboard, which is a digital whiteboard built into Office 365. So if I click on this, it will load up a whiteboard that is automatically shared with everybody in the meeting and everybody can view this whiteboard and draw together. So I can click on the little um, pencil icons and I can say hi. And if I happen to have a device that has a stylus on it, I could draw on that. Um, whiteboard is coming and being enabled for iOS as well. So you'll be able to do this from an iPad. If you happen to have a, an Apple pencil, you can do a whiteboarding session and it saves it to the Microsoft Teams meeting. If I want to erase some content, I can simply erase that if I want to. And this whiteboard is stored with the Microsoft Teams meeting even after the meeting is, has ended. So something new that is coming with the Microsoft whiteboard is the ability to um, capture a whiteboard that is physical in the room. Now, whenever you do this, whenever this feature comes out from Microsoft, you'll be able to, uh, to point a USB webcam at a whiteboard inside of a conference room. And what it will do is it will capture that whiteboard digitally as items are being drawn on it. Um, I'll link to a video in the description below this video that will show you that from Microsoft, how that works. But basically, as someone draws, you will see the rendering on the video. You'll see that line replaced with a vector-based line um, in Microsoft Whiteboard. And what's really cool about that is by the end of the year, that person will be able to step away. The whiteboard will automatically digitally render. And then if that person steps in front of the whiteboard again, it will be digitally displayed on their back so they don't even obscure the whiteboard when they're standing in front of it. So it's pretty amazing technology. It's going to add a lot of accessibility to all of our meetings and the ability to participate even whenever somebody stands up and starts drawing on a whiteboard. That's sharing in Microsoft Teams and we'll see you in the next one.